I think she just flipped me the bird. I don't know. Not, not sure. <laughs> You've got enough birds, I think. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking talk show walk-offs. Are you drunk now? No. Did you drink this morning? No. Because I smell alcohol on you. For this list, we'll be looking at the most jaw-dropping times that celebs left us flabbergasted after abruptly pulling the plug on their screen time. We'll be considering walk-offs that happened on set, off camera, and in pre-taped interview segments for talk shows. Which celebrity do you think should have walked out of a talk show? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Kim Richards, Dr. Phil. In 2015, Real Housewife Kim Richards came on Dr. Phil's show to talk about her battle with addiction and recent arrest. She admitted that she had broken her sobriety, but didn't quite seem ready to accept help despite her children's insistence. Is this an intervention? No. <laughs> Is it feeling like one right now? Because I have to go home. Richards became increasingly agitated and emotional as she bargained the terms of her potential treatment. Ultimately, she became too overwhelmed and walked out, while Dr. Phil and her kids watched her leave in stunned silence. I have a lot of anxiety right now. Okay, just relax. I know, I don't. I have no, a just, lot of anxiety. Uh, uh, sit I'm sorry, down. I can't. It was an emotional interaction, to say the least. Apparently, she subsequently contacted the host to accept his help, but on her terms once more. Later on, it was reported that the reality star had checked herself into rehab. I needed to go recharge myself. And I, I did want to go away for 30 days. Number 9. Gary Coleman, The Insider This late actor made headlines back in 2010 when he was arrested for what was widely reported to be an outstanding warrant relating to a domestic altercation. So when he appeared on The Insider, things got heated pretty quickly. Now if people believe that I'm waffling, then they can go do what they Did need you to do. abuse your wife? Did you abuse her? Did you lay your hand and on you her? And you know what? You can go the same place. Coleman didn't respond well to attorney Lisa Bloom's relentless interrogation and became increasingly agitated, eventually raising his voice and cussing out his interviewer. Pardon me? You can go f yourself. Really? And quit asking me. Is that me? the way you talk to your wife? It got so hostile that it was almost a relief when he eventually stormed out. Gary, come back. No, f you. Number 8. Christine O'Donnell, Piers Morgan Live If you agree to be interviewed, you probably shouldn't be surprised when you're expected to, you know, answer questions. But we guess former Republican Senate candidate Christine O'Donnell didn't get that memo. You keep saying it's in the book, so I'm bemused as to why you wouldn't just say it in an interview if it's in the book. Because I don't think it's relevant. O'Donnell was already well known for her out there opinions, but apparently Piers Morgan asking about her stance on gay marriage was just a step too far. She tried to dodge the question and repeatedly called out the television personality's rudeness. Based on your own public statements and now what you've written in your own book, it's hardly rude to ask you that, surely? Well, don't you think as a host, um, if I say this is what I want to talk about, that's what we should address? Uh, not really, no. Her efforts to end the interview, claiming she had somewhere to be, were surprising yet hilariously awkward. We'll give her this, there aren't too many people who can garner overwhelming support for this otherwise fairly divisive British interviewer. <laughs> it would appear that the interview has just been yeah. ended, because I, I had the audacity to ask questions based on stuff that's in this book. Anyway, it's a good book. Number seven, Paris Hilton, Good Morning America. We saw many different sides of Hilton in this wide-ranging interview, including a little bit of a touchy side. Back in the 2000s, Paris Hilton redefined celebrity culture. She has subsequently become known as the original influencer. Of course, that pool has since widened, leaving ABC reporter Dan Harris to question her relevance during an interview taping for Good Morning America. Do you worry at times that the people who have followed in your footsteps, uh, like Kim Kardashian, are overshadowing you? This prompted the star to give brief responses, scoff and look off camera. When the reporter asked her if she wanted to wrap up, she got up and left. The most surprising part was when Hilton gracefully gave the reporter a second chance. After discussing the matter with her publicist, she returned with a well-crafted answer to his earlier question. Just like any other business person or someone in the industry, it's always important to reinvent yourself and come up with new projects. Astonishingly, they even hugged it out. Fans saw it all play out afterwards on GMA, and it was a roller coaster of emotions. Number 6. Kelsey Grammer, Piers Morgan Live 
The typically unflappable Piers Morgan was astounded when he discovered that his interviewee had fled the building. We have no contact, no. Um, there have been some very uh, unfortunate incidents, public incidents. Apparently, the Frasier star was triggered after seeing a photo of his ex-wife in the program's intro. He had reportedly requested that they show his current spouse, Kate, instead. We've had some, uh, some difficult moments. Uh, the only thing that I've ever really wanted was to try to work out something that would be nice. So he left before the interview even got underway. Morgan called the behavior shockingly unprofessional and later revealed that Grammer had quite an explosive reaction backstage before exiting the CNN studio. However, the actor's rep tried to pin the blame for the incident on Morgan. We can only imagine the awkwardness when Piers told the audience that his guest had gone MIA. Needless to say, Grammer wasn't invited back. And I knew that when it came up, um, we'd be saying goodbye. Number 5. The Bee Gees – Clive Anderson All Talk If you're going to interview one of the most successful music trios of all time, maybe don't use the opportunity to make jabs about their career. You're hit writers, aren't you? We've been doing this well, since we were I think kids. that's the word, anyway. Yeah, yeah, but it's a nice word. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're, we're one letter shy, but anyway, there's this… <laughs> Things were already a little tense because of that, but Anderson pushed it over the edge with a joke about their forgotten hit. That was the final straw for Barry, who decided to end the interview there and then. I, don't, I can't even remember we why. At the same time, called Don't Forget to Remember, which was yeah. interesting. I've, I've forgotten that one. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of, of course. We're getting yeah. on like a storm, aren't we, Tom? Yes. <laughs> In fact, I might just leave. Yeah. <laughs> He was quickly followed by Robin, although Morris lingered for a moment before deciding to side with his brothers. Well, you can stay and uh, just... Well, I'd love to, but I don't do impressions. <laughs> yes. Only he struggled with his microphone, making the now elongated awkwardness even more excruciating to watch. Number 4. Shannon Tweed, The Joy Behar Show Things were already pretty sour when this interview began. What's going on um, over there? I, I had He's a... a pig and I don't like it. He's a pig? Okay. And, I'm, and I'm done. <laughs> Gene Simmons and Shannon Tweed were clearly caught in a lover's dispute, and to say the tension was rife would be an understatement. However, it all balled over when Simmons made a joke that hit a particularly sore spot given his history with infidelity. How's your back, Gene? <laughs> my, my back is good, my, sh my schmeckle not so much. That's very nice of you to joke about It's it. a joke! Where are you going? What are so you doing? Bad. She's so done rude. with you. Tweed removed her microphone and slowly made her way off the set. The craziest part is that Simmons then had the audacity to try and blame Behar for apparently setting him up. Good setup, Joyce. Don't blame me for this. The story has a surprisingly happy ending, with the pair eventually tying the knot. Number 3. Nicholas Brendan, Dr. Phil He's best known to Buffy fans as Xander Harris, but Brendan appeared on Dr. Phil in 2015 to discuss his mental health, battle with addiction, and arrests. Your question for me, I'm currently $50,000 in debt. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend and I just lost our apartment. I've been to rehab twice. How do I get my life together? However, he quickly became upset with Dr. Phil McGraw's line of questioning, especially after he could smell alcohol on him. Clearly, that, and Dr. Phil's claim that Brendan had been to a bar the previous night, was a step too far for the actor. So he quickly got up and walked away. We're done. I'm not doing this. And, uh, Thank you, though. Thank you. Is this open? I, I got a report last night. Good for you, Doc. That he released a statement on Facebook afterwards, explaining that he wasn't willing to expose the darkest parts of himself on TV for the sake of ratings. He returned a few months later, ready to clear things up. I feel a lot better than I did last time, yeah. to be honest with you. How so? I think I need more help than I thought that I, that I realized, you know? Number two, Prince, The View. Okay, we know, Prince was a colossal idol, and you couldn't be faulted for losing your cool in his presence, especially if his visit was a total surprise. Tell everybody why, why you came today. Well, first of all, these are strange hours for rock stars. <laughs> but if you've somehow secured time with Prince, you might want to keep it together long enough to ask him the most pressing questions. Well, that's clearly easier said than done, because Sherry Shepard simply couldn't keep herself together while in such close proximity to the legend. Hey, Prince, could you, could you just hey, say, Sherry, I love you? Thank you. Sherry, I love you. <laughs>
He humoured her at first, but seemingly drew the line when she shared her saucy lifelong dream in front of the entire audience. You don't understand, Prince. I have wanted to make love to you for my whole life. I'm sorry. <laughs> it all happened so fast that we could barely even fathom what had just happened before he disappeared. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Whoopi Goldberg and Joy Behar The View We talk a lot about guests leaving, but you know things have really gotten out of hand when it's two hosts doing the storming off. 70% of the Disgraced political correspondent Bill O'Reilly held some controversial views on plans for a mosque to be built a couple of blocks away from Ground Zero. This sparked a heated discussion, with tensions running high, but then he said this. At that point, co-hosts Whoopi Goldberg and Joy Behar decided that they'd heard enough and left the set. After O'Reilly offered some form of apology, they returned and the conversation continued. But we were still left stunned by their epic walkout. You have written a book, and we're going to come back and talk about it, called Pinheads and Patriots. And at this point, it's very hard to see which you are. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.